Um, my name is Chris Rigby. I've been a commercial pilot ever since I left school back in 1970. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be trained by BOAC BEA at their college at Hamble, just down the road from Southampton where most of us embarked the other day. Uh, I got rather bored of going up to Tenerife in the middle of the night and uh, I went freelance then, flew uh, executive jets, I flew Christopher, uh, Nigel Mansell and other celebrities, government ministers around Europe in private jets for a while. And then a guy rang me up and he said, oh, we've got a new company starting up, Chris, are you interested? Next, next week in Luton. I said, who is it? He said, outfit called EasyJet, have you heard of them? I said, yeah, funny enough. And uh, so I was in the first wave into EasyJet and did four years with them. But then rejoined British Airways at Birmingham Airport on the Embraer 145. Uh, and unfortunately, that was scheduled for a shutdown. That was eventually sold off to Flybe. Um, so just at the right time, dear old Britannia relaunched themselves as Thompsons at Coventry and I joined them as fleet manager on the 737 at Coventry. But unfortunately, after four years, they decided to shut Coventry down, and uh, I have to get my cross in place. I joined Ryanair. <laughs> Who, believe it or not, are an incredibly professional outfit, and if anyone wants to talk about that. Um, I've got six lectures, as Alex mentioned. They're very varied, um, and uh, today we're going to deal with supersonic, but we're going to look at also how aircraft fly, uh, what pilots do of their daily life, and we're also going to take a look at the budget airlines on one lecture. So if uh, you're interested, please do come along. Now, today's lecture is quite a longish one. I've got various versions of it, but because there's nobody in the theatre behind me, I've taken the decision, I hope you don't mind, to do the long version, because there's an awful lot of stuff in here which is so interesting if you're interested in it. But anyway, so let's kick off. Supersonic flight, the dream, as it were. And here we can see uh, an F... 16 with uh, in what's called a transonic, transonic regime where the shock wave is forming on its wing and the low pressure behind the shock wave is causing that condensation of moisture which we can see. So what do we mean by supersonic? Well, supersonic speed as far as air is concerned is the rate of travel of an object that exceeds the speed of sound, Mach 1, and incidentally the word Mach comes from an Austrian scientist, Ernest Mach, who in the 19th century discovered shock waves uh, in front of artillery shells. I recall in the 20th century, the um, 19th century, that's right, to discover this and actually photograph them. Um, and so Mach 1 is rated as the speed of sound. Now, at sea level, normal ambient day, around about 20 degrees centigrade, the speed of sound is approximately 768 miles per hour. But the speed of sound is affected by temperature significantly. Not pressure, but by temperature. Pressure does have a very minor effect, but nothing of any significance. But it is temperature. So at altitude where the supersonic aircraft fly, yeah. at high cruising altitude, the temperature is typically minus 60 degrees centigrade. And the speed of sound reduces with that reduction of temperature to about 650 to 5 miles an hour, around about 100 miles an hour less at the cruising altitude, which is quite remarkable, really. And approaching the speed of sound, as we saw that aircraft in the opening shot, some parts of the aircraft, such as the canopies, the wing structures, where the air has to accelerate over them and go past the super speed of sound on those areas, this is called the transonic regime. And this is the big, big problem with getting into supersonic flight, as we're going to see. So, what about other materials? I find this very interesting. We think of the speed of sound in air, which is what we deal with, because I'm speaking to you here. You can hear the sound waves hitting your eardrums, which is interpreting it as speech into the brain. But what about other materials? Does sound travel? 